97.3 ESPN FM. Certainly want to talk about the Philadelphia Soul and the Boardwalk Bowl on May 30th. We're excited to bring this game to Atlantic City. And you know how hard I've worked and the Soul have worked to bring this game to Atlantic City. This game means a lot to me. We're bringing professional football on May 30th. Uh, The game is going to be nationally televised on CBS Sports. Uh, A lot of good things happening to make it a a, a great football day and obviously capped off with uh, uh, the Philadelphia Soul hosting the Las Vegas Outlaws at 6 o'clock. We're live here on 97.3 ESPN. The DraftKings Boardwalk Bowl is coming to Atlantic City's Boardwalk Hall. Mike Gill, and now joined by one of the owners of the Philadelphia Soul, Ron Jaworski, here at Chickies and Pete's on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, inside the Tropicana, one of the sponsors for this week's, uh, I say this week's because it seems like a college bowl game where the teams are here all week and there's events going on, and this has really kicked it all off, Jaws, and I'll tell you, when I came in here, I wasn't expecting to see a, a crowd like that, I was like... I might actually have to be on my game a little bit. Well, you're always on your game, Mike. You know, we have a great following uh, for the Philadelphia Soul. People love our football team. They love our organization. Of course, I will get this out there. We are 8-1 and one and the best team in the Eastern Division. So it's a good group of guys. You can see our players, our cheerleaders, our coaches, administrators, and an incredible following of our Soul fans. And by the way, Mike, I put this headset on. And I felt like I was back in the booth and I got John Gruden and Mike Tirico (laughs) next to me and we're going to break down a game. So good to be with you, my friend. Yeah, let's let's hear you break down a game because I was talking to Jason beforehand in the first segment about the differences in a play call. Like that to me, like to watch, and I asked him, I said, you watch Chip Kelly, these bubble screens. It's all about getting the ball out of your hand quick. And I said, if this game was created, it's like Twitter of football. Quick, give me the thing out. Give me the information now. This game is so fast, and you're, you're starting to see a lot of these elements in the pro game. Well, it's been going on for a long time, Mike. The bubble screens were part of the Arena Football League a decade ago. Lyman downfield in front of wide receivers a decade ago. Jason probably talked about it. These were plays designed and developed in the Arena Football League. In fact, a couple of years ago, when Chip Kelly was first hired by the Philadelphia Eagles, we were having one of our tryout camps at the Novacare Center. About 300 tryout players. Chip Kelly comes in. This is a couple days after he just signed as Eagles head coach. He's hunting down Clint Dozell, our head coach, and they're talking passing game concepts. A lot of the concepts now used in the National Football League were developed through the Arena Football League, yeah. through college football. Not all of them, but the smart coaches, the guys that are innovative, like a Chip Kelly, They look for every edge, every advantage they can acquire. And it's about design. It's about creating matchups. And in the Arena Football League, Clint Dozell, our head coach, a Hall of Fame quarterback, and will be a Hall of Fame coach. So the first guy Chip Kelly looked for when he came to our practice was our head coach, Clint Dozell. Jaws, tell me and the listeners out there what made this venue and city attractive for this game you know atlantic city as we know tried has tried a lot what made this an attractive situation for for tomorrow's game which you know uh the boardwalk hall i think is one of the top venues to watch anything basketball the sixers were here you're right on the floor when the hockey was here you're right on the floor i was at wrestling last week you're right on the floor boxing you're right on the floor i was at the who concert friday night <laughs> you're right there you I, were rocking uh, mike you I'm, were rocking i'm brother. tired man <laughs> i'm tired but why atlantic city why boardwalk hall it's personal it, it really is this, this is personal to me i came to philadelphia in 1977 from los angeles my wife and i dug our roots in South Jersey and it's been home for us ever since I've been fortunate to be an ESPN broadcast for 25 years an NFL quarterback uh, the good Lord has shined a very positive light on me we love the Jersey Shore and over the last year I'll be honest with you I've been a little pissed off that this community has gotten knocked yeah there's some ups and downs in the you know, casino industry, but I know the people in this community. It's, it's, it's the fabric of the community that I believe in. And, and when I kept seeing the negativity about Atlantic City and Southern New Jersey, I, I, I saw an opportunity. 
to bring an Arena Football League game to Boardwalk Hall. Now, this is, now this is my wild, crazy imagination, Mike. And you know I have 32 concussions, so some, <laughs> some of these synapses don't connect. So I'm thinking, hey, you know what? I love the Jersey Shore. I love Southern New Jersey. I want to bring in a, one of our arena games out tonight. And we play at the beautiful Wells Fargo Center, nine home games, and hopefully a couple playoff games, and maybe in a Arena Football League championship game. I thought, I'm going to take one of those games, and maybe two, down in Atlantic City. So I met with all the powers to be. Mayor Don Guardian was phenomenal. The CRDA and John Palmieri, Jim Keough. I can go on and on and on. They all bought in. They thought it would be a really good opportunity to showcase Atlantic City. The game will be on national television tomorrow night from Atlantic City on CBS Sportsnet. National TV. So I think it's incumbent upon all those people in this area to believe in what we're about. We love sports. We love community. And this is a chance to fill Boardwalk Hall. And oh, by the way, I always got a follow-up story, Mike. Come down to Boardwalk Hall. My wife Liz and I, John Pemary, John Adams, our COO. And John takes us for a tour of Boardwalk Hall. I walked in the building. Now, I've been to fights there. Larry Holmes and uh, Mike Tyson. And who, not a Who concert, but been to concerts there. <laughs> and I walked in the building. Oh, man, this is it. This is Boardwalk Hall. This is perfect for arena football. 10,000 seats. Great sight lines. Our game, you can reach out and grab a wide receiver. You can reach out and grab a defensive back. They're so close to the field. So this Boardwalk Hall venue is perfect for arena football. And we're hoping to have seven to 10,000 screaming fans there tomorrow night and really showcasing Atlantic City. Uh, obviously, and Roger Worski's with us here. We're live inside Chickies and Pete's at the Tropicana. This is a venue in itself right here. I mean, this right place right here is fantastic. You can almost blow out this wall and put the arena floor right in here. We, we, okay. Well, since we've got some players here, we can do that. we got cheerleaders here. They can do it. <laughs> we've got a little game going yeah, on. Hey, you're absolutely right. And, oh, by the way, it's been fun that Atlantic City really has embraced this. I mean, Tony Rodeo here at the Tropicana. Jim Zarius, they've been phenomenal. When I approach them, you know what a great job they did with the Maxwell Football Club. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 2,000 people showed up for the National Football League Awards Gala given out by the Maxwell Football Club. Over 100 million homes at the Maxwell Football Club dinner in right here from Atlantic City. And Jim Rodeo, excuse me, Tony Rodeo has done a great job. Jim Zaria has done a great job. We are thankful to the people here at the TROP and Atlantic City for the great support they've given these events. Well, what I want to, you know, obviously the Soul uh, has had an interesting history. What drew you to this team? What drew you to this league? Football. I, I'm, I'm a football guy. And um, like most people in the world, we can't afford an NFL team. <laughs> and I thought this would be like a really cool opportunity, you know, to get involved with ownership. Just like my business partner over there, Marcus Colston, the leading receiver in the history of the New Orleans Saints. Did he come it, to you or do you go to him? Uh, well, it was kind of uh, uh, both ways. I, How do you know he's interested? Well, because he, was, he owned the Harrisburg team okay. in the Indoor Football League, and we would share these tryout camps. So himself and his coaching staff would come, and we just started talking. And last year he said, hey, you know, I might be interested in going up to the big leagues, to the Philadelphia Soul. And that's how it got started. Here's a guy that's a leading receiver for the New Orleans Saints in their history. Now, he now lives in Medford, New Jersey. He's a local South Jersey guy. He thought this would be a great opportunity. And he's been an incredible ambassador, not only for the Philadelphia Soul, but for the Arena Football League and South Jersey. So you can see how these things spawn and grow and make things work. And Marcus Colson is a class act. Yeah, and we'll uh, catch up with him in just a bit here. I do want to remind people uh, that the DraftKings Boardwalk Bowl here at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, it all begins right now. It doesn't start tomorrow. It begins right now, uh, right here at Chickies and Pete's in Atlantic City. Tomorrow at noon, there's a pep rally here in 80s band. The Sandpipers will be out at 3. There's a tailgate at Kennedy Plaza. And that will lead you right inside the Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City for kickoff. And then tomorrow night, I'm told about 10-ish was the number. 10-ish? No, if, no, our games are done in six, uh, excuse me, two hours and a half. So we'll be probably right back here at Chickie and Pete's by 9 o'clock. All right, 9 Celebrating it. a victory over Vince Neal. <laughs> you know, Vince Neal, that Motley Crew guy. We're just going to kick their ass, by the way, Mike. And I just want to make that crystal clear. So if anyone comes to Boardwalk Hall tomorrow night, and Vince Neal will be here, you know, we got a lot of dignitaries coming. Mayor Don Guardian, Senator Sweeney. we got a lot of people coming. 
Vince Neal will be here. I'll shake his hand before the game. That'll be it because they will kick their butt as we get on the field. Well, that's so he'll come here all round up, and Mike. that's open to the public, right? That is open to the public. Party. And you, you mentioned we tried to create not just a football game, but a bowl game atmosphere. Our cheerleaders, our staff, our players are in town for the last couple of days, hanging out. You see with your the customers here, chicken feet. The soul man out on the boardwalk, interacting with all the fans that are walking up and down the boardwalk. So we are trying to integrate. Philadelphia, the Philadelphia soul with the Jersey Shore, and it's a great compliment. Well, Charles, I know we got a lot of people that want to talk to you, shake hands, kiss. No, babies. I want to talk to you all. Now. I don't talk to you. I got, <laughs> I got Jason out there. I don't talk to him. I, he lives with me in NFL Films. I don't want to hang with him. Oh, believe me, I I've been watching you, his work, man. I, I everybody, uh, this has been a great thing to be a part of. But Charles, it's great to see you, man. We'll see you tomorrow too. I'm going to be at the links early in the day. Uh, you're, no, you're going to be doing what? You're going to be partying. That's right. I know, because you're not Finally. working tomorrow. Finally. I love it. Double love time it, for man. me today. <laughs> LPGA tomorrow, over here tomorrow night. It's a great sports weekend here in Atlantic City. Hey, and I agree with you. I, I played Wednesday. You were out there Wednesday in the Pro-Am. Uh, I played with uh, Arthur Munoz, phenomenal young lady, great golfer. It was a class act day. I had a wonderful time. The shop at LPGA has brought so much positive to Atlantic City, and it's nice to be part of this whole week with the ShopRite Classic, an arena football game on national television. Good things happening in Atlantic City, Mike. Hey, they're saying a crowd of almost over 50,000 expected for the LPGA. That's, that they deserve it. Those ladies are flat out awesome. So as you mentioned yesterday, I would anticipate a big walk up. People really coming over for a beautiful day. It's supposed to be nice tomorrow. All right. I'm not in charge of weather, though. I'm in charge of victories. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it from Jaws, a little ass kicking tomorrow night here at the Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. When we come back, we're going to learn more about this game and more about this team and the Boardwalk Bowl coming to Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City right here on 97.3 ESPN. 97.3 ESPN FM. Certainly want to talk about the Philadelphia Soul and the Boardwalk Bowl on May 30th. We're excited to bring this game to Atlantic City. And you know how hard I've worked to, and the Soul have worked to bring this game to Atlantic City. This game means a lot to me. We're bringing professional football on May 30th. Uh, the game is going to be nationally televised on CBS Sports. Uh, a lot of good things happening to make it a, a, a great football day and obviously capped off with the uh, uh, the Philadelphia Soul hosting the Las Vegas Outlaws at 6 o'clock. Football's coming to the boardwalk tomorrow night, 6 o'clock kickoff. The boardwalk ball here in Atlantic City. Mike Gill, and we are joined by one of the owners of the Philadelphia Soul, Marcus Colston. You recognize him from the New Orleans Saints, uh, Hofstra University. And I drafted you on my fantasy team the next year, and I said, this guy, I remember you being in one of those commercials on ESPN, and, and I was like, this guy is going to be unbelievable. Uh, it goes by so fast, and I guess as you realize, uh, you decide, you know what, i got to do something different, and uh, here you are. You're now an owner. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, trust me, I remember those days too, and I, I kind of spend my, my days now trying to get back to that form. But, um, you know, as I'm coming to the, to the end of my career, I definitely saw an opportunity to transition into um, an industry that I know very well in football and, you know, join a really great group of, uh, of owners and, and front office staff um, and just really a great organization in the Philadelphia Soul, and, and I couldn't be more more uh, blessed. Now, I was asking Jaws, how does this happen? Uh, do you go to him? Does he go to you? Do you just kind of run in the same circles and say, Throw me, uh, throw me an offer. What do you? What, what, let's see if we can make it happen here. I know you were on, you were, you know, working with the team in Harrisburg. So, how did it all? You and Jaws get together here. Well, Jaws and I, you know, obviously um, have, have crossed paths a ton just in, in the NFL circle, and actually uh, had a chance to meet uh, John Adams, the COO, uh, about three years ago, and, and you know, he really became for me in Harrisburg, and just stayed in communication with him, and. Um, you know, the opportunity presented itself over the summer, and it was one that I, I wanted to take advantage of. To the point where, you know, talking off the air, you actually have a home here now. I mean, you decided that I have enough connection to this team that I'm going to make a home right outside uh, Philadelphia. That's that's pretty. That's a that's a big investment to say that you're going to do that. You know, I mean, that shows that, that you mean business. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm originally from uh, from Harrisburg, and my wife is from uh, from Pensacola, so. Uh, you know, the move made sense for us, you know, personally with, with our families being close and, you know, raising a family that way and, and obviously having having the business interest here in, in, uh, in the Philadelphia and South Jersey community with the soul uh, was a no-brainer for us. Uh, he's Marcus Colson. We're 97.3 ESPN. You know, talking to Jules about the game, you watch the Eagles offense, Chip Kelly, these bubble screens, everything's so fast. 
you now own one of these teams. Do you see a lot of teams stealing stuff from these Arena League games? Or do you go to Sean Payton and say, you know, we're do- Clint Dozell's doing this for us. We might want to run this, you know, type of play. The unfortunate thing is uh, if I were to do that, I probably wouldn't get the ball. <laughs> It'd be one of those little, little uh, young, quick guys. But, uh, yeah, I, I think the arena game, it has a lot of, of these short short screen passes and, uh, you know, just quick game. It, it's kind of manufacturing a running game. And I, I think um, in a lot of ways you're seeing that, that transition to the NFL. I think Chip Kelly does a really great job of that. Do you think we might see more quarterbacks get a chance now with the way the NFL is? Get the ball out of your hand get it to the guys, and let them go. Do you think in the next couple of years we'll see more arena quarterbacks play in the NFL? I, I can definitely see that as, as a possibility. Um, I mean, you mentioned it, the, the emphasis on the quick game and getting the ball out of your hands and just, you know, making, making you know, quick and decisive, uh, you know, choices with the ball. I can definitely see that, that happening. Last, uh, you know, the Eagles are getting their OTAs. Saints OTAs getting ready. You guys uh, starting to get. It's amazing how fast it seems like the off season goes. You guys don't get any off season anymore, but uh, you getting ready for the OTAs. Yeah, we just uh, just finished up our first week down there and hot as ever. But uh, and where do you guys do that? Uh, we're, we're right in our, at our, our practice facility in, in Metairie, okay, uh, which is about twenty minutes outside the city. So um, yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, just great to to be back, you know, to to football. Um, you know, we've been lifting and running and, and doing all of that good stuff. But there's nothing like playing football. No, and uh, obviously you've been in New Orleans now, you said 10 years. And uh, have you adapted to living down there? I mean, it's a little different world. I mean, uh, the food's a lot different and everything. Have you really enjoyed living in that area? Yeah, I've, I've absolutely enjoyed it. Um, you know, the, the people, you know, are, are, are great. I always say that Southern hospitality is a real thing. Um, you know, the food is, is something that will get you in trouble if you let it. Um, <laughs> I'd be in trouble down there. And you really never quite adjusted that heat, but, you know, it becomes bearable after a while. Well, uh, 10 years. He's got a lot of Saint records. He's now one of the co-owners uh, of the Philadelphia Soul. The Boardwalk Balls coming to Atlantic City. And, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing uh, to see professional football in that building, which has had so many historic events in there. Uh, and it's uh, glad to, we're glad to have you a part of it. And uh, it's good to meet you and have you on board here. I appreciate you having me on. And you got really it. Looking forward to tomorrow. Absolutely. By the way, 6 o'clock tomorrow night, the Boardwalk Bowl here at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Uh, Marcus Colson, we are live here at Chickies and Pete's on the Boardwalk in Atlantic City. Have, been, have you been to Atlantic City prior to uh, this whole weekend and everything? Uh, one, one other time. And actually back... Right, right here in Chicken Peak. So uh, hopefully, you know, make make it a uh, you know more regular thing. Let's hope that happens. So come on out tomorrow and check it out. Once again, Marcus Colson, Mike Gill here on 97.3 ESPN. We're gonna check in one last time here on the other side. Clint Dozell is the head coach. He's gonna tell us a little bit about how you coach this game and how you find players to play this game. That's coming up next here on the special Boardwalk Bowl special here on 97.3 ESPN. All right, we're back live here at Chickies and Pete's here on 97.3 ESPN. Oh, he's got the Who music bringing us back in. Just so Coach Clint Dozell, the uh, photos that we took last week of the Who concert. Full house there. It'll be nice to see something like that tomorrow. That building is a nice venue for a game like this, Coach. And uh, I don't know if they'll get 13,000 like the Who did the other night because Roger Daltrey is not playing quarterback. But uh, you got a pretty good quarterback yourself. We do. And Dan Rodbaz, he's one of the best in the league. He's definitely top three. He's been that way for the last four years. Uh, he's only getting better. This is this is a turnaround year. Uh, I think he's fully got the grasp of the offense, the league, how it's supposed to be played. And uh, a great crowd tomorrow night would be uh, set this thing off great. You just mentioned the grasp of the offense and the league, and that's one of the things Jason and I were kind of talking about. You know, the differences in this game and the NFL game or even the college game and how you come up with plays for – uh, an eight-man game and how do you design the plays and call them differently and you know it was that a transition that you embraced or was it tough at the beginning no you know it's embraced well i had some great coaches over the years to be honest with you i, I got to take a lot of it from them um I, i've sprinkled a little bit of my offense over the years after playing 13 years at quarterback in this game and um, figuring out what works what doesn't work what keeps you upright and healthy uh, i think that's the biggest thing is you know keeping your quarterback safe um, if you can keep him playing 16 games or 18 games, how many the season is, and he's going to be a good one like Dan is, you've got a great chance to win a championship. We've been kind of talking about it throughout the day, uh, or I should say the night. I started at 2 o'clock this afternoon, but uh, here we are. The NFL game, especially an offense like Chip Kelly's and in Philadelphia, the, the bubble screens and all this quick, 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 quick. Is that something that you're noticing the NFL is taking more out of your pages and bringing it to their game? 
Uh, they're thieving. That's that's <laughs> the, that's the honest fact. They're thieving. There was bunch formations, no stack formations. They were invented in arena football. They don't know how to run them yet, but, but they'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> now, is that something that somewhere down the line you hope someone notices you and your offense and and you become an offensive coordinator first? And, and is that a goal to be a head coach in the NFL? If it happened, it would be great. Um, but I really love what I do. Uh, I can't lie about it. It's nothing better than, than, you know, we work four or five hours a day, put a lot of work in, put a lot of time in, you know, as far as with the players. We watch film, break it down as coaches on our own as well. Um, it's just fun. You know, it, it's like playing high school football where it's actually fun again. You know, having two stints in the NFL as, as a quarterback, you know, on, on some teams. That was the most stressful time of my life. I mean, holy cow. I mean, you, I probably lost five, ten years of my life just from the stress from that. But this is a great game. Uh, it's it, Like I said, it's fast-paced. It's fan-friendly. There's never a dull moment in it. Um, you know, and I, I get to work six months out of the year and be with my family the other six and spend a little time with them. It's, it's just a great situation. Jason, go ahead. Well, Coach, I just want to talk about just the, the, the evolving of, of the game itself. At the quarterback position, you know, you've definitely been one of the best. Um, just talk about the maturation process that you've seen Dan come through since he's came in. You know, he has, you know. And, and like I said, I, I thought it, year five is when I figured it out. Um, and this is his fifth year as far as, you know, going out and, and, and understanding the whole arena football game. And understanding what defense is going to give you. By the time that motion hits there, we know exactly where the ball is going to go. And we can protect, you know, our situation, our run game is basically a lot of little quick passes. Our bubble screens, like you talked about, the little quick things in the red zone. Um, although we do have a really good running game, Dan's taking over and throwing down there. I think that's the biggest thing, uh, you know, where a lot of interceptions happen is inside the five-yard line. You know, we've had to throw a lot more inside the five-yard line. He's taken that and he's, he's run with it. Well, definitely. I was talking to Coach Stingley earlier about just his ability to call plays based on having an offense so powerful. I mean, number one offense in the arena league right now with the soul. It just how it you know, changes his aggressiveness as a defensive play caller because you guys are scoring so prolifically. That is a good point, you know, and Stingley's been around for a long time. You know, and my whole staff has, you know, Coach uh, Bogle as well as the offense, defensive line. You know, I feel like we definitely have the best coaching staff in the league uh, from top to bottom. Uh, great ownership as well, but Singley is. He's taking. He's being really aggressive on the defensive side, knowing we we have the confidence that we feel like we're going to score every time, which you're supposed to in this game, but doesn't always work out that way. But you know, he he has got confidence in us, and we got confidence in him. So we take some more chances on the other side. Well, as we know we're going to get some stops. I was going to ask you that. You take more chances knowing that your defense is playing lights out. Guys like Romain and Brian Robinson. Bring yep, pressure and up front. we're only getting better over there too. We yeah. got a lot of young guys over there that that we we let. You know, take hold of the reins this year, and you mentioned uh, in, in Romaine. Uh, I think he's one of the best in the league as well, and, and he's only going to get better. Uh, his confidence is growing. He's making the rest of the guys better, and our pass rush is getting there too. And so we got a great thing going right now, and our special teams are picking up too. Coach, what is the process or the hunt to find an arena league player? What? What? Who is? Is it a guy who's a very good college player and just doesn't make it, or is there something different about a guy? to make it in this league? Uh, you got to find something unique about a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys in the NFL that are making millions and millions of dollars that can't play our game, and vice versa, obviously. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of great quarterbacks that play in the NFL that couldn't play our game. you got to be able to get rid of the ball and make quick decisions. Not they can't make quick decisions, but quick releases, you know, is so, so huge in this game. And be able to process it in a matter of, you know, two seconds. It's not a – there's no three or four seconds. It's two seconds, and, and, and things got to happen. So – um, there's a lot of translation that goes into it as far as the skill positions from that match the NFL to our game as well. I, I was asking Marcus about the quarterback position, and you mentioned that they're thieving your plays. Are they going to start thieving your quarterbacks because they have that innate ability to know one, two, boom, one, two, boom, and that you're seeing these Chip Kelly type of college offenses. Are you going to start seeing them now say, you know what, this guy's pretty good at getting the ball out of his hands. We're going to take you. We'll take you. They should. If they're not, they should. Uh, when I got my second chance to go with the Bears in 2000, um, after playing four or five years of the Arena League, it was honestly easy. It was very easy out there on the NFL field. Hmm. The guys were wide open compared to our game. Now you got to have the arm strength and all thing to go with it. You know, it's not it's not a you know a 27 yard wide area throwing. You're having to throw, throw side on the sideline. But if you got the arm strength to play, you know, the outdoor game 
and you come and play this game and figure out how quick and fast it is and get to those guys that can know what to do with the football, you know, there's a reason Kurt Warner did what he did. It was that easy, and it can be if you got the right guy in the right situation. Well, it is the DraftKings Boardwalk Bowl, and uh, we're live here at Chickies and Pete's about to wrap everything up. Coach Clint Tazel uh, with the Philadelphia Soul. They'll be here tomorrow night at 6 o'clock against the Las Vegas Outlaws. 8-1, and one. the team is playing very well, and uh, we saw an arena championship here a couple of years ago, and I guess uh, that is the only goal right now to get back there and bring another one home. It is. We'd love to win that championship. We'd love to be here in Philly, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, we, we, we need a little help from San Jose, but I, I like where our group's heading. i got a bunch of good guys. Well, we hope that uh, more people will get a chance to see your guys tomorrow at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Tickets for this event are available at ChambersNJ.com. Click on events, go to the Soul website, and uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Good luck tomorrow and the, the rest of the season, and thanks for bringing the game down here to Atlantic City. No, we're looking forward to it. Appreciate it.